Putin annexes part of Ukraine, even though he's not supposed to. Your news update, and we talk about stablecoin on this edition of Arbitrage News Weekend, starting right now. Hello and welcome to Arbitrage News Weekend for October 1st, 2022. What? Yeah, that's right. I'm Joshua Stark. Russian President Putin signed treaties Friday to illegally annex more occupied Ukrainian territory in a sharp escalation of his seven-month invasion. Ukraine's president immediately countered with a surprise application to join the NATO military alliance. Putin's land grab and President Volodymyr Zelensky's signing of what he said is an accelerated NATO membership application sent the two leaders speeding even faster on a collision course that is cranking up fears of a full-blown conflict between Russia and the West. Putin vowed to protect newly annexed regions of Ukraine by all available means, a nuclear-backed threat at a Kremlin signing ceremony where he also rallied furiously at the West, accusing the United States and its allies of seeking Russia's destruction. Inflation in the European countries using the euro currency has broken into double digits as prices for electricity and natural gas soar, signaling a looming winter recession for one of the globe's major economies as higher prices undermine consumer spending power. Consumer prices in the 19-country eurozone rose a record 10% in September from a year earlier, up from an annual 9.1% in August. EU statistics agencies Eurostat reported Friday. Only a year ago, inflation was as low as 3.4%. TikTok's popularity has surged despite worries from policymakers in Washington about TikTok's handling of user data and misinformation, as well as ties to China's government. Those fears prompted the U.S. Armed Forces to prohibit the app on military devices and spurred calls to ban it on all government computers and phones as well. I have serious concerns about the opportunities that the Chinese Communist Party has to access TikTok's data on American users, Senator Rob Portman of Ohio said at a hearing this month focused on the national security implications of social media. Still, its reach is undeniable. TikTok is consumed by two-thirds of American teens, a number that has risen to as other platforms have lost popularity. It's the world's most downloaded app and the second most visited website after Google. A cowherd in Germany has gained an unlikely following after adopting a lone wild boar piglet. Farmer Friedrich Staple told the DPA news agency that he spotted the piglet among the herd in the central German community of Breivard about three weeks ago. It had likely lost its group when they crossed a nearby river. Staple said that he knows what extensive damage wild boars can cause. He can't bring himself to chase the animal away, DPA reported Thursday. The local hunter has been told not to shoot the piglet, nicknamed Frida, and in winter, Stapel plans to put it in the shed with the mother cows. To leave it alone now would be unfair, he told DPA. News and more next on Arbitrage News Weekend. Stick around. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly... It's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed, could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. 
Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. This week's ArbitrageTrade.com blog includes ants marching and arming. Apologies to Dave Matthews' band. And we talk stabilizing stablecoin. All this and more in this week's Arbitrage blog, available now at ArbitrageTrade.com. Now let's go to the president and chief ant wrangler of Arbitrage, Mr. Royce Wells, for more. Royce, this is an Ari article, our intrepid Ari. Mm -hmm. She seems to have a fixation on animals and how they can hurt us. I don't don't quite understand this. not good. But we're talking about ants having reinforced metal teeth. All I want to say is apologies to Henry Mancini fans. (laughs) Sorry. Also, hope we don't get demonetized there. I don't know. I'll, I'll uh, think no, no, that will. wasn't 15 bars. All right. I have 15 bars worth of sample. Hey. And that was all a cappella. So, yeah. There you go. <laughs> I so, could flat, sharp, you know. <laughs> I don't know. So, apparently, scientists have, have done what scientists do, and they find that uh, instead of calcified teeth like we have, bone and and calcification on on you know the the teeth that we have apparently ants teeth are metal yeah i like it full metal alchemist no that's an anime uh that's not an anime <sighs> okay, we're gonna have to stop the tape, and I'm gonna have to hurt you, man. The, the, no, no, what? no, no. This, this, I like the way this is going. No, jaws. No, uh, so wait, is it odd job? Can we like basically draw, mm. you know, draw a hat, and you know, he bite the wire, and he's an ant. <sighs> apologies I mean, we... to apologies <laughs> to to you're apologizing uh, James a lot. Bond fans now. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> Well, ant mandibles apparently are are much stronger than humans uh, humans mouths, and I think we know this. Uh, they're they're about six hundred times stronger than humans. Wow! Uh, so think about that one. Another one bites the dust. You're on one today, aren't you? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's fun. I like doing these. Oh, man. I know. I know. So, uh, here's the thing, right? Um, okay. So, we, are they carnivores? Well, uh, no. They're, Sorry, just random thought. They're 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 herbivores. Oh, okay. Uh, I guess that's good, because otherwise, yeah. But they do bite. They Ooh. definitely bite. There Only are biting in, ants. You know. Yeah, red ants, for sure. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But uh, we have certain kinds of teeth in the animal world that uh that it's it's one of those things where you know teeth grow back right our our yeah we have teeth shark don't they have two sets three sets whatever sharks exactly um um talk about rabbits and things like that they have they have teeth if a mandible breaks for an ant that's basically death for them because oh no they uh, they need all of their they need all their teeth, um, using them not only for chewing and eating but also carrying and moving materials. So I mean it, it's one of those things uh, and, and digging too. So you know the so more we know. Iron jaw fee what fee mandible fee fee. I'm, 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 more I'm, after <laughs> this. Hi, we're the Goo Goo Dolls. We're fortunate that we can give our daughters everything they need to grow and learn. But not every child can focus on classes and play dates. Nearly 13 million kids in the U.S. face hunger. That's one in six. School lunch might be their only meal each day, and it's heartbreaking to imagine any child going to bed hungry. We're dreaming of a perfect day when kids can smile, play, and just be kids without worrying about where their next meal will come from. Feeding America is working to make that perfect day a reality. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste. That food is given to families and children in need. Being a kid should be about doing things that make an ordinary day extraordinary. Learning to play an instrument, building a sandcastle, hosting tea parties. Hunger should never be an obstacle to growing up. You can help end childhood hunger in your community by visiting feedingamerica.org. 
Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Disgruntled Airbnb guests are taking to Twitter and TikTok to vent about everything from cleaning fees to misleading listings. But they aren't the only ones with complaints. Airbnb hosts themselves have become increasingly disillusioned with the platform and its disrespectful guests. On message boards and Facebook groups, hosts are sharing their own challenges and horror stories. One host claimed that a group of guests was unwilling to leave the property despite receiving a full refund from Airbnb. I went to the apartment to check what was going on, and I was in shock to discover that the tenants were still in the apartment. The host wrote on the website Airbnb Hell. They immediately called the police on me, and I was kicked out of my own apartment by a team of the police. A complete shock. While these anecdotes might seem like the natural byproduct of the largely unregulated short-term rental industry, they speak to larger trends impacting hosts. A 2021 report from Bloomberg detailed how Airbnb's secretive crisis team spends millions of dollars to limit the publicity of crimes and other incidents at its listings, potentially damaging to the company's reputation. And the platform recently launched anti-party technology in an effort to defray hosts' frustration with large destructive gatherings. These issues raise the question, is Airbnb itself the problem, or are the guests? In May of this year, Airbnb launched a new air cover protection plan for guests and hosts. It promises quick reimbursement for hosts and up to $1 million in damage protection. And while many hosts consider this policy generous, it still comes with plenty of gray areas. Emily Muskin Rather, a digital marketing professional living in Cleveland, began renting her house on Airbnb in August of 2021. She says that hosting has been a pleasant and profitable enterprise overall, but a few guests have caused major problems, including a family that rented the house this June. They left the house a mess, she said. There was human feces on our laundry. They sprayed silly string all over the place. I didn't care about the silly string, but can you pick it up? It left stains, oddly. Musk and Rather received reimbursement from Airbnb for most of her claims, but some damage, such as nail polish smeared on the bathroom tile, didn't qualify for reimbursement because she wasn't able to provide documentation for the cost of the tile. And then there was the smell. It really, really stunk. The air conditioning had been left off for a week in June. The early days of short-term vacation rentals offered hosts a simple proposition, rent your home and earn some extra money. Yet as the industry has matured, it has been met with regulation efforts from local governments. Cities such as Denver and Portland, Oregon have been cracking down on unlicensed short-term rentals, levying fines against hosts and requiring expensive permits. These policies allow local governments to collect taxes and regulate problematic behavior, but they add one more layer of complexity for hosts, many of whom have little experience in hospitality. Furthermore, many local governments place the burden of tax collection on hosts, not Airbnb. Problems on both sides. We'll see how this plays out. We'll keep you informed on Arbitrage News Weekend. More after this. Okay, so Sarah, I'm dropping you off at Emily's? Yep. And Josh, you're going to? Soccer, Dad. Soccer practice. Right. Oh, by the way, I just wanted to let you know when I pick you both up, I'll be wearing my short shorts. What? No! Yep, and my dorky dad hat, and I'm going to do my dad dance for all your friends. They'll love it! Seriously? Why? Because I like my short shorts. Of course, I could be talked out of it if you guys would just buckle up your seatbelts without giving me a hard time. It's important to get your kids to buckle up for safety, no matter what it takes. And sometimes, all it takes is your parental powers of persuasion. Okay, okay, we're buckling up. See, all buckled. Good choice. I'll just have to do my dad dance at dinner time. What, what? No! no! 
Do what you have to to make sure your kids are wearing their seatbelts, even on short drives. Never give up until they buckle up. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Visit safercar.gov slash kidsbuckleup for more information. Royce, we all like to take a vacation every once in a while, and we have to travel for business and things like that. I, I personally love flying. I only like flying if I can do it in first class. <laughs> well, I mean, that's nice, but what if you can save money while you're flying in first class? Um, okay, where do I sign? Shut yeah, up and right? take my money. So the Biden administration announced a new initiative that would basically eventually allow us to see a more complete price on airline tickets, including like bag- baggage and oh, nice. change fees. I like that. Before you buy. You know, that that's going to be a game changer. Man, you're telling me. Because I want some of that. You go to sites like, uh, what, Kayak, and there's uh, uh, Expedia. Um, but these sites, they kind of they kind of show you, you know, kind of a ballpark price. Yes. and Just to get you bait and switch. Yeah. And the thing is, is that there are other costs on And I've that. seen this happen at a hotel, too. They're like, hey, hotel room, $99. You get there, and you just wind up spending 235 and you're like, I thought this was $99. Hey. There's a resort fee, and there's a this fee, and there's a that fee. Yeah. There's a laundry fee, and a, and a hey. bar fee, and a uh, No, that's if you fee. do all those other things. So, yeah. That's right, 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 right. <laughs> so... Well, <laughs> this is an initiative that's uh, being put forth by the Department of Transportation uh, to make sure that we can see the true cost of of things. Uh, the 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 requirement's not going to apply only to airlines directly, but also to those third parties search sites like Kayak and Expedia. Um, airlines made five point three billion dollars in baggage fees wow and nearly 700 million on cancellation and change fees for like uh last year for like uh change fees for extra leg room and other perks that aren't tracked uh unfortunately and if you think about this you know that comes straight out of our pockets and sometimes we don't even know it does right it's that's their way of basically nickeling diming you until you basically you've already got the plane. I've even seen a, uh, and not to cut out any particular airline, yeah, where you buy a plane ticket but that doesn't include the seat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, isn't that funny? How does that work? Yeah, or, <laughs> or surprise, it's an extra fifty dollars for that other bag you want to check. Yeah, they're like, and you, you know. can't carry it on, or. Mm-hmm. Or hey, uh, we've got this business lounge, but um, you got to pay extra for access to it. Yep, things like that. Oh, you mean like the Delta Sky Lounge? What? Oops, oops. What? Oh, what? 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 Sorry. What? I said no. out loud. Dang what? It. No. I hate it when what? that happens. What? Or credit cards that give you uh, benefits, and you can be in that lounge, but then it's not the the main lounge. You're like, no, that's not us. Sorry, you have yeah, to get our blah 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 card to be in this lounge the the executive card yeah yeah so, gotta love that but hopefully the biden administration can basically help curtail some of that and basically make it a little bit cheaper so maybe i can afford that the next trip i make out town absolutely dude i mean come on uh, hello vegas here we come <laughs> that sounds like a deal to me i'll hold you to that more after this <laughs> No word in the English language is less convincing than probably. Are you sure we should get matching tattoos on our first date? Sure. Um, We'll probably stay together. Probably? (laughs) It's been 23 minutes since I ate. I can probably swim. Uh, you should wait 30 minutes. Mm, Okay, now tell me what to do. Cannonball! (laughs) Cramp! Oh, I have a cramp. I can probably hit the green from here. Probably. Can I get a mulligan? Ready to go? Hey, are you sure you're okay to drive? Yeah, I'm pretty sober. 
Yeah, I'm probably okay. Probably okay isn't okay, especially when it comes to drinking and driving. If you're drinking, call a cab, a car, or a friend. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council. For more than half a century, ABC, CBS, and NBC have been airing newscasts each weeknight on television. This fall, the competition has spread to another medium. The launch of John Dickerson's CBS News Primetime in September means that all three news divisions have unique streaming newscasts at night, a nod to the future and a bid to reach young people who aren't watching television at dinner time. Dickerson's newscast debuted nearly a year after NBC's top story with Tom Lamas. ABC's Live Prime with Lindsay Davis started in February 2020. Each streams live for at least an hour starting at 7 p.m. Eastern and are repeated later in the evening. All can be seen for free. The revolution will not be televised, Davis quipped. It will be streamed. Her, she and her rivals have big ambitions. We want to be the best news show, period, Lamas said. I don't want to be just the best show on streaming. Looking past the similarities, each have intriguing differences in approach, more so than the broadcast evening news shows led by Lester Holt, David Muir, and Nora O'Donnell. Network news divisions aren't looking to replace the television broadcasts, which usually reach around 20 million people combined every night during cold, more during cold weather months. The streamcasts almost certainly don't approach those numbers, although if anyone knows for sure how many people are watching, they aren't telling. There isn't a single outside source that measures audience size like the Nielsen Company does for TV. The networks all say the shows are catching on, but won't share their own statistics with competitors or public, often a sign that those levels are low. Dickerson brings the most broadcast experience to his role, having reported for 60 Minutes, moderated Face the Nation, and hosted CBS This Morning. At its launch, his streamcast quickly distinguished itself as the most interview-heavy of the three. He will debrief CBS News reporters who have done television stories to empty their notebooks of additional details and find experts for conversations on the day's major stories. I'm interested in who the person is who may not be known, but knows what's going on, Dickerson said. It's great to be able to ask the experts yourself whether the experts are within CBS or not. Probing with experts to tell people more about stories they may have seen flash by in the headlines leans into Dickerson's strength as a journalist, said Anthony Galloway, CBS News Streaming Senior Vice President. The most established streamcast, ABC's Live Prime, which takes advantage of what streaming has to offer over television right now. Time. Davis's show is the most apt to stretch reports beyond what can be seen on TV's World News Tonight. As Muir traveled to Ukraine, the streaming show gave him 10 minutes to report on what happened in a village recently liberated from the Russians. That kind of length is a luxury seldom afforded on television evening news programs that roughly have 22 minutes of news between commercials. A profile of the jam band OAR stretched like a guitar solo and correspondent Phil Lipoff even went on stage to play with the band. Live Prime airs for an hour and a half, with the others airing for an hour. Why was the basketball court all wet? Because the players kept dribbling on it. <laughs> the dad joke. Corny, groan-worthy, but also one of the simplest ways to share a moment with your kids. What did the buffalo say when he dropped his son off for school? Bye, son. <laughs> so take a moment to make your kid laugh, because dad jokes rule. Make your kid laugh today. Go to fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Adopt U.S. Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting. A Teenager. Learning the Lingo. Jelly. Jelly adjective. Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous. As in, 
Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. You know, Royce, Jerome Powell is always meddling in, in uh, interest rates and things like that right now. Don't fight the Fed. Dude, he's talking about regulating stable coins now. Uh, who saw that coming? I'm like, if you can regulate it, that means you can monitor it and you can see where it's going. And yeah. And remember that whole repatriating money? Sure. Hey, you want to bring that money into this country? There's a fee. <laughs> What? Well, we we <laughs> talked about the digital dollar last week, and it just seems like it's seems like it's all folding in together. After quite nicely, wouldn't you say a little too yeah, nicely? A little too nicely. Uh, we are in the middle of what some traders are calling crypto winter uh, because of yes. the drop in cryptocurrency, and some of that has to do with hey. Um, the U.S. wants to know how much you're spending on your crypto, buddy. Yeah, that's their way of poking their heads. I think crypto in its inception was a beautiful idea. They started with the idea of saying, hey, we want it to be decentralized so that way the government wouldn't have their fingers in it. And it sort of backfired because the ledger and the way that basically you're keeping up with the cryptocurrency literally leaves fingerprints everywhere to literally know that you made those purchases and where the money came from and how you got it in there and when you bought and when you sold. And everyone can see that literally by just doing a single query against the ledger. Jerome calls that significant structural issues. Oh, okay. Isn't that, isn't that funny? Don't we like issues? Isn't that funny? <laughs> and he says, he says that congratulations, it's because we, we raised interest rates. But no, that's not necessarily true, is it? No, not at all. Um, yes, interest rates did rise, but that was literally the Fed saying, hey, for you people who are less risky investors, it's safer to hide your money in a bank and you'll get 4 to 5% without risk of being in the market. So guess what? Go take profit. But in not so many words. Right, right. I think the argument here is that if it looks like money and it smells like money, then it needs to be regulated like money. Of course, the Fed. You know the Fed is not the federal government. No, no. It's actually a Federal Reserve Bank that is a It's a private organization, and yep. it's not even tied to the government. But and they loan they us sure money. They sure do act like it. They loan us money. Right. And so basically, to make sure that they keep the reins, they are doing everything in their power to basically make sure that monetary spending uh, remains both monitorable and uh, basically correlatable to uh, individuals. Right. I'm not sure if you remember, they were talking about uh, Biden uh, a few months ago was talking about um, any bank account that has more than $500, they need to be able to see into it and know what it's doing. I remember that, yeah. Yep, that's all a part of that. Yeah, and you know we talked about the digital dollar last week and how we're behind other countries in that. Um, uh, we're talking about China digital, uh, t- China's testing a digital yuan and and things like that. And and the thing is, is that is that the Fed is evaluating policy issues and technology issues. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, have a great weekend. That's it for arbitrage weekend. And uh, Royce, have a great weekend. You too, Josh. Arbitrage News Daily is back on Monday. If you're not listening to it, what are you doing with your life? Have a great weekend. Arbitrage Trade Analytics, LLC, is a privately held market research company. Arbitrage Trade Analytics, LLC, is solely responsible for the preparation and distribution of the content of this podcast. The opinions offered in this podcast are for informational purposes only and are not intended to be investment advice. Seek a duly licensed professional for investment advice. For more information about the informational research and services offered by Arbitrage Trade Analytics, LLC, please visit Arbitrage 